What's going on everybody, it's Tosh here. So I wanted to talk to you all about a move I made in my M1 Finance portfolio and maybe it's a controversial one. We'll see what you guys think. Of course, let me know in the comments as always. And this is a portfolio that I started strictly for the YouTube channel back in July of 2019. Started it from $0 all the way to where it is right now. So let's talk about what's been going on. It's sitting at a little bit under $13,000. I believe the last time we did an update, it was at about 12400 And over the past month here, since I've made that last update video, we're up over almost $600, up $580 to be exact, up about 5%, $570 being for market gain, and about 12 more like $11 coming from earned dividends. And over the past week, we're up $300. $50 as the market's been bouncing back nicely, up almost 3%. And today alone, we're up $20, not too much, as the stock market is a bit overbought. We've mentioned that before here on the YouTube channel. In the very short term, I think it is a little bit overbought. So we might be seeing some volatility in the very short term. We'll see. So overall, guys, yeah, we've been doing well over the past month, the past week, and over the past quarter as well. We're up $1,000, up 9%, up $900 from market gains, about $70 there from earned dividends. And these are the holdings I have here. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. I can't show you guys that new holding. I'm not sure if you caught it or not. Wait, wait, wait for that. And yeah, this is what we're looking like. And again, I want to show you all what I just did today. And I want to give you all my reasoning for why I did this. And hear me out, right? So this portfolio, you all know from the last update video, I trimmed it down from 20 stocks to 15 stocks, or maybe it was 19 stocks to 15 stocks. And that's because I felt a little bit too diversified. So I trimmed it down to 15 stocks. And I mentioned how 12 of my stocks paid dividends. And, and Disney, once they start paying a dividend again at some point in the future, that'll be 13 stocks. So a lot of my companies paid dividends and I was doing some math and when it came to value versus growth in this particular portfolio in my opinion with my time horizon and for me being a younger guy in his mid-20s you know I was too heavy in value right not saying that I'm cutting completely out of my value plays my dividend plays because trust me those are still there but I wanted to add a little bit more growth by adding one stock stock to this portfolio. And let's do some math quickly. I'll do some math right now with you guys to tell you all a little bit more in depth about this value versus growth. 57% of my portfolio, and screw it, I'll just show you guys right now. I added Tesla today. I, had, I ended up adding Tesla to the portfolio. But if you added up the, the, the math in terms of growth versus value, 57% was in value, right? And I consider Altria more of a value dividend oriented player. You guys know, maybe more of a mature company, let's put it that way, and uh, a dividend payer. So that's more quote unquote. And you could consider uh, Altria value because it's at a pretty low P right now. You know, Raytheon's, it's in that same category. Maybe not as much, but I definitely put Barrett Gold in that category. You know, Abvi maybe as well. Well, Exxon Mobil, Pepsi, um, J and J for sure. So these are companies that are great, no doubt about it. But they're not growing too much, and they're more value oriented, right? They're more considered on the dividend value side. And for me, again, being a younger guy, you know, I have a lot of time ahead of me. I don't want to just be solely and, and mostly in value. I want to get more growth exposure into the portfolio. So can you guys guess and, and try and think what holding is missing here? If you guys remember this, I'd be pretty impressed. Or if you called it out, I'd be pretty impressed. Take a look at all these companies here. The company that's missing from last episode, Procter and & Gamble. And when I was looking at this portfolio, I understood and I was thinking to myself, okay, I have money in a lot of different industries here, but I feel like I have Pepsi and Procter and & Gamble and those are not, they're obviously not the same company. They have different products, but they're both consumer defensive. 
And when I'm looking at these businesses, whenever there's a recession, whenever there's a depressed economy, most people are still going to buy Pepsi products and Procter and Gamble pro uh, Gamble products. Hence, why they're uh, consumer defensive. So I figured. Let me just cut out of one of these, replace it with Tesla, since I already have two stocks in consumer defensive, I might as well pick the one I like more, go with that, and then kick the other one out and add a growth name to the portfolio. Even if people are like, oh, Tesla's overvalued, Stas, you just made a mistake. Because the truth is, guys, I bought Tesla. You guys can see here my buy-in price. Where was it? Okay, 683. That is not too bad. Yeah, it could be a bit frothy here. Sure, 550 a couple weeks ago would have been better. 400, 500 is of course better, but as an initial position, I bought 1.1 shares. You know, I bought 750 bucks in this portfolio. I'm cool with buying at 680, and if it drops to 500, I'm just going to buy more because this is a long-term portfolio. And if it goes down to $150, take a look at this guy. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Look at this article by The Motley Fool. Look at this right here. The Motley Fool, and we're not going to read it, but it says Tesla stock is way overblown and only worth $150. I kind of want to read this, but that's a bit off topic. What does it say here? Can you guys even see uh, my screen right now? Look, Go read this for yourselves, guys, but I'm not sure what the heck this guy has to argue about with a $150 stock price. That is ridiculous. If Tesla went down to 150 I would definitely buy more. So you guys get the reasoning behind this. I didn't want to be too heavy and consumer defensive. I already have Pepsi and I had Procter & Gamble and they made about 15% of my portfolio. So I kicked out Procter & Gamble. Tesla's in here at about 5.7% of the portfolio right now, but I'm going to get it to about six seven percent over time uh probably add a little bit more to it again especially if it drops down to whatever price it does get to and this is what i'm rocking and rolling with right now guys i mean a lot of these i've held for over a year and you have to understand when you're dealing with the stock market and long-term investing if you hold over one year let's say you buy today april 7th and you hold on till next year april 7th or let's say april 8th or april 10th whatever next year and you sell you pay 15% as opposed to short-term capital gains, which is a completely different story. So I'm pretty much going to pay long-term capital gains on Procter & Gamble on some of the lots. I mean, I bought some shares less than a year ago, but a lot of the shares or you know, even the fractional shares I bought for Procter & Gamble were over a year ago. So I made money in Procter & Gamble, going to pay the, uh, the little tax there. I'm okay with that. And I'm going to again, obviously funneling the money here. So keep that in mind whenever you're making moves in your portfolio, you know, okay, have I held the stock over a year? What kind of tax am I going to pay here? And what I did in 2019 or yeah, it was actually no earlier in 2020 as I'm getting my taxes. Um, I should have done this earlier, but I'm doing my taxes now, guys. You know, as I'm getting all this stuff together to send over to the, uh, to the accountant, I'm seeing, oh, okay, uh, I took a little loss on Wells Fargo. I took a loss on Boeing. If you guys remember in this account, that was uh, over a year ago at this point or around a year ago. And that is a way you could actually use those tax losses. And of course, I'm not a CEO. PA and I'm not an accountant. I'm not anything close to that. But you could use those losses and write them against your gains, right? So that is a nice strategy you can do there. And that helps you save some money on taxes, assuming you didn't lose a lot of money and you didn't make as much money as you lost. So that, that's completely different. But if you're making money in the markets and you have some losses here and there, you know, you can write that against your gains and there's a strategy for that. And again, I'm not a CPA, but you guys must understand this stuff, especially if you're new. You have to know the difference between short-term capital gains, less than a year, and long-term because it makes a difference, especially with different strategies you have. In this case, with this portfolio, this is a long-term portfolio, and I want to hold everything over a year. That is the goal. So yeah, that's what I did, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see further content.
content like this, you might as well check out the playlist to see how this portfolio started and how it got all the way to where it is today. And if you all want to use M1 Finance, a great brokerage for long-term investing, check out my link down below. You can get $30 free. That is limited time, guys. So make sure to open up an account, deposit any amount of money, and we each get $30 to invest. And you guys can check out my Patreon if you want real-time buy and sell alerts, call-outs, moves I'm making in this portfolio, other portfolios I have. And if you just want more access to me throughout the day, exclusive content as well, that is on Patreon, link down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe out there, guys. Keep crushing the markets. Peace out.